broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations. Next on Hikino, stories from across the island chain. The only downside is it's become an addiction. The longest I played was five hours. Why is Kendama so addicting? Plus, a science teacher uses the Ironman triathlon to measure her limits. Also, never judge a substitute teacher by his cover. And you'll meet another teacher who proves that first impressions don't always tell the whole story. Learn how to make a rubber band bracelet. How art changed a teacher's life. And how the values of the 442nd Regiment are being adopted by our future leaders. All on this episode of Hikino, coming to you from St. Francis School on Oahu, home of the Saints. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network. Hikino can do! Welcome to St. Francis School located in Manoa Valley in Honolulu on the island of Oahu. Our patron, St. Francis, was not always a saint as the title implies. Before becoming a devout Christian, he was the spoiled son of a wealthy family. It was only after being a prisoner of war that Francis's eyes and heart were opened by God during what became the lowest points of his life. With God's grace and help, Francis became the joyful saint he's known as today. Our first story takes us to central Oahu, where students from Waipahu High School ask the question, why is Kendama so popular? Kendama, a Japanese wooden toy meaning sword ball. It contains a spike and three different cup sizes. It appears to be a toy craze in Hawaii and is quite prevalent on campuses across the state. Let's find out what makes the Kendama so popular. I think Kendamas are so popular because it's not really a, a game or a toy that you can master. So like once you learn the basics, you can just keep going and start to learn more top of the line tricks. I think Kendama is popular because a lot of people play it and pretty much it's, pretty, it's been passed on from everyone like, oh, try this toy, it's pretty cool. And that's how I got hooked onto Kendama too. Kendamas are popular because it's fun and it's a good time to make new friends with. It's physical and it's not just on a screen and it gets them moving and the fact that I guess it challenges them in a way. It's interactive because it helps with my motor skills and hand-eye coordination skills. I honestly think it's better than seeing kids messing with their phone all the time. I think it's very positive. The only downside is it's become an addiction to to the um, to the level where they're playing it during class, so I think it's fine as long as they don't um, play it when they're not supposed to. I play kendama continuously from four hours. The longest I played was five hours. Mm -hmm. It's addictive. <laughs> I don't think kendama should be played in class at all because school is a lot more important than kendama. Oh my god. <laughs> Because the popularity of the kendama continues to grow each day, it seems as if the trend will stay for a while. This is John DiOrio for Waipahu High School reporting for Hikina. We're back at St. Francis School, home base for this episode of Hikino. This statue of Mother Marianne, now St. Marianne, was placed here shortly before her canonization in October 2012. After receiving a plea from King Kalakaua himself in 1883, St. Marianne, along with six other nuns, arrived in Kalapapa, Molokai to aid in treating Hansen's disease. St. Marianne took care of each one with her own two hands. Miraculously, she nor any of the sisters ever contracted the disease. In addition to St. Marianne, we also have a statue for Brother Joseph Dutton. Although he never took religious vows, Dutton was known as Brother Joseph a brother to everyone, born in Vermont, 
Ira Barnes Dutton enlisted in the 13th Wisconsin Infantry Regiment. This statue was recently transferred and installed from its home on Molokai. Like St. Mary Ann, Brother Joseph Dutton felt the call to help those in need. Our next story comes to us from Island School on Kauai, where we meet a science teacher who entered the Ironman Triathlon to find out what she's made of. Former UCLA soccer captain and current Island School science teacher, Mary Castellanelli, shares how goal setting has allowed her to successfully balance and manage her time between teaching and training for the 2013 Kona Ironman. I remember watching it at nine years, you know, I was nine years old and I'm watching it on TV and I'm like, these guys just said what? And they're on like mile 20 in the run. I'm like, they just, I'm sorry, what? They are truly Iron Man. I was like convinced, I was like, they're made of iron. Yep, they're made of iron because nobody can actually do that unless you're made of iron. <laughs> Um, training for the Ironman and teaching is really challenging, of course, but I enjoy setting goals and I enjoy being challenged and I've always kind of filled my plate probably a little bit too full, but that's how I've kind of always operated and it keeps me very focused with what I'm doing. Um, gives me something to be working towards, which I really enjoy. And I want to be challenged. I'm really interested in, in limits and finding my own limits and trying to determine what they are and so with the Ironman it's really been a true test of what my limits are as far as physical limits and even you know emotional <laughs> limits as well because it does take an emotional toll on you. People always ask me why I do these events because I think morally, I'm actually against Ironmans. They don't even make sense when you think about it. Who wants to go and do that for 11 hours? And you pay to do it. But it just, to me, I think goal setting is so important and having something to focus on. It just, for me, it gives me my drive. And you know, that translates to other areas in my life. So I've always been working towards a goal. So if I don't have something I'm working towards, then it's really hard for me. I, would I recommend an Ironman? Everyone has their own interests, passions, their own ideas of what's challenging for them. I, I, I wouldn't say I'd recommend it. I just think you should find something that you're passionate about, find something that's going to challenge you, set goals, and then take the necessary steps to reach those goals. This is Chan Chu from Island School on Kauai for Hikino. If you'd like to comment on this story or anything you see on Hikino, join the discussion at facebook.com slash hikino can do or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash hikino can do. We're back at St. Francis School where we have a diverse student body catering to students from South Korea, Japan, China, and more. International students come to our school to learn English while assimilating to American culture. Meeting students from other cultures exposes us to the larger world beyond our islands and teaches us acceptance and patience with different people of all races. We take you now to the Valley Isle, where students from Kamehameha School's Maui Middle show that there can be a lot more to a substitute teacher than meets the eye. So I'll teach everything from art to science, and math, and Hawaiian studies, whatever, everything, even PE. Some students look at substitute teachers as people who don't have much talent or are not as smart as their regular teachers. I think people think substitute teachers aren't that smart because they like never experience what happens in the classroom and if they were smart they would be teachers. However, Dr. Gary Greenberg proves that when it comes to substitute teachers, there is more than what meets the eye. I've written books. I'm on my fifth book right now. Um, my first book was on, uh, on sand through the microscope. Not only is he a published author and scientist, but a college professor and inventor of a special microscope as well. I'm at the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy, and I'm looking at moon sand, sand that was retrieved from the moon 40 years ago in the Apollo missions. And I'm using my 3D microscopes to look at sand in 3D and characterize what the little grains are made of and what they look like in 3D and how they were formed. With his books, inventions, and his university responsibilities, one might wonder why he chooses to substitute teach at a middle school. 
When I first came here and got the opportunity to teach at Kamehameha Schools, I realized that this was a really great way for me to fit in a little bit with the Hawaiian community. Being a, a teacher at Kamehameha Schools and an all-Hawaiian school has enriched my life in ways that never, ever could have happened had I not been teaching at Kamehameha Schools. Though teaching is something he is passionate about, there are times where students can be difficult. We've all been to school, you know, I was a youngster once, when you have substitutes, sometimes you take advantage of them. Tell them things that aren't exactly true and, you know, sort of don't behave in class. And I think it's through mutual respect that you, that you keep a, a good relationship with kids. I think it's a very fortunate for us because although he could choose any school across probably the whole nation, he still comes back here and teaches us. There is an old saying that goes, never judge a book by its cover. Everyone can learn a new thing from a substitute teacher. Students just have to give them a chance. This is Jalen Nobrega for Kamehameha Schools Maui for Hikino. Now, another story about how students can have misperceptions about their teachers. This report from Eva Makai Middle School on Oahu first aired in February of 2013. Yes, I was definitely scared of him ever since I got my schedule. <laughs> yeah. After the stories the 8th graders told me, yeah, I was really intimidated by him. Gosh, I think Mr. Wong is strict. I've heard, his, I've heard he's mean and I've walked in the hallway and I've seen him and he, he yells now. Mr. David Wong, a science teacher at Makai Middle School, has a reputation for being the school's most frightening teacher on campus. Intimidating as Mr. Wong is, he has a different way of teaching his students that he's developed over his 21 years of being a teacher. Although he may seem frightening, he carries the best intentions for his students. It's not important that my students like me. Uh, my number one job is to build relationships with my students, but that the relationship itself will help them to be prepared for the next few years and maybe more years after that. That's fine. And it fits, right? Okay, she's already ahead of you. I'm strict and I have a high expectation of my students to be good communicators, communicate with me, communicate with each other. It's learning how to formulate those questions, formulate those uh, answers. And I, and, I, and I do that because it's, it's really the thinking process and if we can get students to practice asking good questions, we have evidence that they're being complex thinkers and with those complex higher order questions, they can pursue higher answers and more discovery for themselves. RJ, use two hands. You have two hands, use two hands. For me, the most surprising thing is uh, the, when students don't expect something and they discover without having expected it, that's, that's surprise. I want my students to become, first of all, kind people. I want them to be generous. I want them to be thankful. Uh, I want them to be community contributors as good citizens in this country, to give back of their talents and their skills. Uh, I want them to experience success and excellence in their life. I want them to be, um, I want them to have strong, healthy families. Yes, I do believe Mr. Wong is preparing me for high school because he's showing me how in the world are beyond, you know, if you don't have a plan, you don't get in. If you don't, ha if you don't, have, if you don't have any good purpose, you're not going. They don't care. Mr. Wong is a great teacher, to be honest. I definitely believe he's preparing me for high school. Although Mr. Wong carries the reputation of the hammer, which stems from his authoritative personality, this makes the students look at him with a different kind of respect. It gives them the experiences they need to be successful in high school and beyond. His real-world teaching methods give students a level of responsibility and pushes them to become better people. I hope that my students will continue to um, be appreciative, and usually it's after the fact. They don't usually, not usually appreciative while they're with me, uh, but they usually come back and say, thanks, I didn't realize it, but you really prepared me for high school or you prepared me for college. Uh, you, just, you prepared me to think better, ask better questions. Um, you taught me how to get along with people and to value relationships. And I, I would hope that they would be appreciative of that. Although Mr. Wong can be frightening at first, 
He only hopes that his students can appreciate everything he has taught them about life. This is Madeline Rodriguez with Evmakai Middle School for Hikino. We're here once again at St. Francis School in Green Manoa Valley in the beautiful senior courtyard. St. Francis began a new era graduating the first co-ed class of 2013 this past May. But it was actually the class of 2002 who had the privilege of making history with the first and only male graduate. Mackenzie Metcalf transferred from St. Francis School on Kauai that closed down due to low enrollment as a result of the declining economy. Former classmate Annie Lamedo remembers him as a quiet young man. He was very respectful and followed the traditions of an all-girls campus. Now, from the west side of Kauai, students from Waimea Canyon Middle School show us how to make a fashion-forward accessory made of rubber bands. Do you want to make a fishtail rubber band bracelet? Well, we are going to teach you how. First, gather your materials. You will need small rubber bands of any color, S-shaped clips, and something with two prongs that is stiff. Please be careful not to hurt yourself on the pointed tips of the prongs. Start your bracelet by getting your first color and put it on the two prongs in an infinity sign shape. Get your next color and put it on the same prongs, above the infinity shaped rubber band. Get your third color and put it on top of those two, on the same prongs. One side at a time, bring both sides of the infinity sign up and over the prongs, making sure the other two rubber bands stay on. Put your next color on above the other rubber bands, on the same prongs. Bring the bottommost rubber band up and over the prongs, one side at a time, making sure the others do not come off. Continue this process until your bracelet reached its desired length. When you do reach your desired length, pull on the bracelet to tighten it. Make sure it fits your wrist by wrapping the bracelet around your wrist. To end your bracelet, don't add any more rubber bands. Just bring up the last two on the prongs. Pull off the rubber band bracelet, making sure to keep its ends closed. Add an S-shaped clip to attach it. Put two sides of the last rubber band in on one end, then attach the other side. Now you're finished making your fishtail bracelet. Remember, you can play around with the colors to make any style you like. Have fun! We're back in Manoa at St. Francis where behind me stands our brand new Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic and Music Complex. This facility has been a long time coming not only for students but for alumni as well. While St. Francis School has always had a welcoming atmosphere, faculty, staff, students and alumni all have a new gathering place to come home to. Our next story comes from Kihei, Maui, where students at Lokelani Intermediate School show us how a teacher's illness led to the discovery of her passion, art. I work as an eighth grade science teacher here at Lokelani Intermediate School, and I've recently picked up on teaching an art class also. It seems it's my hobby. Well, it's not for the money. It's, um, it's actually more about the fun moments that we have in class. It's those moments when people connect and or the aha moment when someone really learns something and they finally get it. Those are all the fun times. Several years ago I got very sick and was in and out of the hospital a lot and recuperating with a how to draw cartoon book. It caught me like a bug, like a disease. And actually that was the silver lining for getting sick. It was the learning how to draw. Because before that, I couldn't draw stick people. And I wouldn't even try. You know, I think that's the most exciting part about drawing is the feeling that I can get into. Then when I get to drawing, I can completely lose track of everything. It totally overwhelms me. I love doing portraits, so just when I look in people's eyes and I see who they are by looking in their eyes, I love it when I can capture the person's soul. It's just, it's fun, it's challenging, it's like a puzzle to me. Let's see if I can nail it. I, I'm learning art by reading books and listening to tapes and going online, and so I'm just learning by myself. Like anything you, you learn brand new, it's frustrating, and especially if it's a high technical skill you're learning. 
I can't tell you how many trash dumpsters I must have filled with the mistakes. I mean, at, through all that frustration, you know, you persevere through that frustration, you can develop the skill. I think the uh, art skill is latent in a lot of people. There's a skill there that a lot of people could wake up. not only brought life back to Miss James, but helped her share her passion and creativity. I am Megan King, reporting from Loki Lani Intermediate School for Hickey Now. Welcome back to St. Francis School. After the construction of the gym, the old basketball court was moved to the upper courtyard, which is now called the Sousa Courtyard, dedicated to our head of school, Sister Joan of Arc Sousa's parents, who supported the school in every aspect possible. Encouraging physical activity, students use this courtyard to play basketball, volleyball, and other fun things during their breaks. Our final story comes to us from the Makiki District of Oahu, where students at Roosevelt High School learn of the values developed by the famed 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Over 70 years ago, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese Americans confronted an untrusting nation. In 1943, the 442nd 100th Battalion Combat Regimental Team, the first ever all-Japanese American military unit, was formed. Said Tsukiyama, one of the few remaining Nisei veterans from the 442nd, shares his experience of the price of equality. There was a price to pay. You know, blood was shed, lives were, were lost, and uh, all that is because you know, the motivation is we've got to prove our loyalty. Through his service in the military, Mr. Tsukiyama envisioned the country where all races come together. The lesson is that, well, you know, you've heard the phrase, Americanism is not a matter of race, color, or ancestry. Americanism is a matter of the mind, the heart, and the spirit. The hard work and success of the 442nd made it possible for more Japanese Americans to advance in the U.S. society. General Shinseki, you know, he, be, he became the first uh, Japanese American to be chief, Army Chief of Staff, the, the number one uh, position in, in, uh, in uh, the U.S. Army. Yeah. And he always says, uh, you know, I got here, I'm standing on the shoulders of those Nisei soldiers. So he, he knows that somebody else sacrificed, somebody else worked hard. To this day, the work and the values of the 442nd still live in the hearts and the minds of the American people. Major Kimura of Roosevelt High School is a senior instructor of the JROTC program and a firm supporter of the values of the 442nd. That working together and, and that focus and that, that discipline drove them to accomplish a lot of things that other units that didn't have that type of adversity to, to bind them together. Uh, it's just fantastic what they were, were able to accomplish uh, in that very, uh, very intense situation, uh, time, time period of our history. Major Kimura uses the values and lessons of the 442nd to teach his cadets the importance of cooperation. Bringing to the ROTC program is team building, team bonding, working as a team. One person is not more important than the other. It's the whole team concept. And uh, of, of course, a lot of the uh, indoctrination, and I guess Douglas MacArthur said it the best way, duty, honor, country, and then we put it here, duty, honor, country, and Roosevelt. And the last thing I want to emphasize is that each one of us has uh, strong points, and sometimes we need some, some help in some areas, but if we're working together, uh, that's, that's the ideal situation, and that's what we want to do with our program here at Roosevelt. From a soldier with a cause, to an army instructor, to the future leaders of our nation, the legacy of the 442nd lives on. This is Abigail Olipani from Roosevelt High School, reporting for Yikino. We're back in Manila Valley where you'll find many students and teachers from our St. Francis family. When the students of St. Francis School are craving something other than cafeteria food, they head down to Manila Marketplace for a bite to eat. The students here support local businesses such as Waipuna Sushi, Andy's Sandwich Shop, and everyone's favorite crack seed store, Kay's Crack Seed. 
Chu Cheng Yang of the class of 2014 runs this store along with her mother and grandmother. Well, we have come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students hiki know. Can do! Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations.